Yes! What is up, everyone? And let's roll the clip. No. As much as I love it, not that clip. Roll the other clip. It's the very curious news from around the globe with the amazing code. Very curious news, Adam. Number one, the shortlist for the 2019 Ballon d'Or has been announced. And I got a few comments and concerns about this. My first concern is that it's called a shortlist. It has 30 names on it. How is that a shortlist? My second thing is how bad I feel for Luka Modric. He wins it the year before, and he can't even sniff the top 30 this time around. That kind of sucks. Also, one of Liverpool's young fullbacks can make the list, but not the other? What? Those two balance each other out. Also, don't get me wrong, I think Trent Alexander-Arnold is a boss and he will be for a long time, but if he's on it, Andy Robertson should definitely be on it too. And maybe Jan Oblak or Ederson over Hugo Lloris? Maybe? Is that a reach? And then Marquinhos is on the short list? Marquinhos? Now sure, the dude is a baller, no doubt, but he didn't have a better season than Laporte at City, and Christian Eriksen couldn't sneak in over Donny Van de Beek from Ajax? What? Also, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but Neymar got left off the team too. Yes, the man that I think we all assumed wanted to leave Barcelona so he could win a Ballon d'Or for himself since he probably correctly thought that he would never win one if he was on Messi's team. Well, that hasn't played out too well for him at PSG. However, on his day, he is easily one of the best five players in the world, maybe even top three. So you would think that would merit some respect and consideration for him to be on this list. However, France Football, the publication that represents the Ballon d'Or, came out and listed eight reasons why the Brazilian superstar was left off the 30-man long list. It's not a short list, it's a long list. And here are those eight reasons and their specific dates. Yes, they took the extra step of getting everything detailed, like they were ready for the hate they were going to receive once they left him off this list. So are you ready for this? Are you sitting down? I hope so. Number one, January 23rd. I wish they gave us the exact times as well. Metatarsal injury, they say. And all right, I can see why an injury could hurt your chances, just like it did for Harry Kane too, who's also not on this list. But then wait, didn't Kevin De Bruyne miss a lot of time last season due to an injury? And he's on the list? Where's the consistency, motherfuckers? Number two. March 6th, he abused match officials after the Manchester United match in the Champions League. Now listen, the dude wasn't even playing, but he was still supporting his team no matter what, and I love that emotion. However, I can see why that can and should be held against you. You shouldn't abuse the refs. So, Though, I'd like to see everyone else's track record of everyone else on this list as it pertains to abusing refs, because I'm pretty sure not all of these guys are saints. Number three, April 27th, he pushed a supporter. Now before you make a rush to judgment, here's the replay. What do you guys think? And yes, he obviously shouldn't push anyone, but this seemed a little more personal. Like, he knew this guy in some way, because everyone else has their camera out too, so I don't know. I'm not really sure what to make of this. However, is this enough to hold it against him and not put him on a short list because of that? That's pretty harsh. Number four, June 6th. He has an ankle injury ahead of Copa America. Fine, whatever, he's got another injury. Get off his back. Five, August 9th, cleared of rape allegations. And what? You're holding this against him when he got cleared of it? Then how is Ronaldo on this list if rape allegations is a thing? I'm just saying. Six, transfer window. Failed to move to Barcelona. Is this a joke? Number seven, September 14th, he got jeered by PSG fans. So hold up, time out. You can lose votes for the Ballon d'Or because your own fans are upset at you? Were they upset when he scored the game-winning goal in his first match back? Did he earn those votes back? What? And finally, the last one, number eight, October 13th, another injury on international duty. All right. So why does France football go to all these lengths to offer up this much detail when they could have just said he was hurt for a lot of the season and that's why he's not in? I would have accepted that and I'm sure everyone else would have too. This is a crazy ass list. Also, just because no one asks for it, I'm gonna give it to you anyway. So here's my ball on door, starting 11 from the 30 names on the kind of short but not really list. And they are, drum roll please, and Mike K better put drums underneath this or I'm gonna look like a complete idiot so you know what to do Mike K. I feel like this isn't going well for me. Anyway, let's take a look. Definitely Allison in goal. Trent Alexander-Arnold for sure, Van Dyke, probably Koulibaly here. Though I probably would have gone with De Ligt if it was just based on his time at Ajax, but his form with Juve hasn't been great and that's an understatement. Also, are there no left backs in this list? What in the what? What? How many times have I said what so far in this episode? 
I guess I'm going with the back three, which means we're probably going to be in a 3-4-3 formation. So in my four-man midfield, I'm going to go with... How are there no CDMs? Who's going to protect my back four, my back three? I forgot, I don't have any left backs. I guess Vinaldum is the best option for the sixth spot. Then I'd probably go with Frankie de Jong off one of his shoulders. Then Bernardo Silva off another one of his shoulders. And Messi is the 10? Yeah, okay. Also, before you keyboard warriors get going about how I'm an idiot. Meh, such an idiot. Meh, just dumb American. Look at this list of names, okay? This isn't easy. And if you say otherwise, I know you're lying. Though now that I'm thinking about it a little bit more, as much as I love me some Bernardo Silva, maybe, maybe I throw Eden Hazard in his spot instead so I can get Hazard out on the field because he's not gonna start my front three, I don't think. And I thought he was terrific for Chelsea last season. And he's always pretty good for Belgium, though he hasn't started too well at Real Madrid. Though maybe that's because I cursed him when we took a selfie together in New York. Do I take responsibility for that? Is it all my fault? No, it's not all my fault. So maybe I take out De Jong and put Hazard in there instead and leave Silva in too. And I don't know, I'm conflicted because I like Silva and De Jong because these guys are a little bit more possession based. And since we won't have too much width coming from our back three, it's gonna be important for us to take advantage of our numerical advantage in midfield, which means it's imperative that we keep the ball. Now, Hazard can obviously keep the ball too, but his instincts are to drive forward at all times. I don't even know if I made a decision on that. Anyway, my front three would be for sure Sterling on one wing. The guy continues to find another level with each game for club and country, which has been awesome to see. And then I think Sadio Mane out on the other wing. I'm sorry, most Law fans. I just think that Mane has stood out just slightly more over the last 10 and a half months than Mo. Yeah, you're gonna have to deal with it. And then as much as I'm a huge Robert Lewandowski fan, I think I'm going with Cristiano Ronaldo as the number nine. The dude just shows up in big games. He's a winner. And I need that mentality on the field. However, Lewandowski has scored more goals in CR7 in 2019, especially this season. The guy is on fire for club and country, but can I really leave CR7 out of the team? Like, really? The man just scored his 700th goal of his career. However, if we look at it from what this team or any team needs, I think that Lewandowski would do more of the dirty work, of running the channels and holding the ball up. And given how he's playing at the moment, he's definitely gonna bang in the goals too. But CR7 just has that thing about him. And given the fact that this team would probably have 85% possession, maybe even more, Running the channels and holding the ball up probably won't matter all that much. It'll be finishing only, so hmm. Who do you go with here? And how do we decide who to go with? Anyway, we're done here. No more very curious news items for today, just one. So let me know what your top 11 would be, and then I'll hop in the comments to give you a hard time about why your top 11 is not as good as my top 11. Is that cool? Cool. Later.